When I was a teenager, I told my family, I want to become a civil engineer. And my uncle looked at me in horror and he said, but you will be calculating concrete elements for the rest of your life, as if that's the worst thing I could ever do to myself. Fast forward 12 years and here I am getting a PhD in concrete bridges. Well, this shows you what I do in the laboratory. Like Lester said, crushing big blocks of concrete. And I think it's always exciting to see this happen. But I don't think you need to be technical to understand the versatility of concrete. I think it's easy as a piece of cake. And therefore, I've chosen cake as an analogy. Now, before we get started on concrete as a material, I would like to think about the final product, the structure first. Because I firmly believe that we as human beings are in a constant interaction with our environment, whether that be the built environment or the natural environment. So I'll be showing you a series of photographs, and I'll ask you to look at them very closely and see what kind of impact they have on you. And I'd like to ask you to see if there is a dialogue between the structure and the light, if it gives you a sense of safety, or maybe just the opposite. Maybe it makes you a little nervous to see something like that. And if the structure is embedded within its natural environment, if it becomes part of it, or if it stands out as a landmark and dominates everything around it. Now, with that said, I would like to ask you, what comes to your mind when I say concrete structures? You might think of the mid-rises from the 60s and 70s, or the typical highway bridges from that time. And they were built because concrete is cheap. So we could use concrete to build affordable housing for the increasing population, or bridges in the roads, because all these people want to go from A to B. You might as well associate it with our university campus and the typical architecture that we see here. Most likely, you will not associate it with innovative design. And today, I will show you how you can achieve that in concrete. So let's start with the material. How do we make concrete? Well, we combine sand, cement, stones and water. Now, for those of you who have made concrete in your backyard, you might know the recipe as one, two, three, one, two, four. It's very easy to make concrete. Just as easy as baking a cake, where you combine flour, milk, eggs, and butter, and you get to dough. And just like you, your dough needs to go into the oven to bake your cake, your concrete needs to be poured into a mold, and it needs to stand there for a few days, typically 28 days to gain full strength. So what you see on this photograph is how we make the specimens that I tested. Um, so you see we pour the concrete into the mold and this is the very beginning of the life of one of my specimens. What you saw in the very first photograph, the block of concrete with a very big crack, is the very end of the life when we have completely destroyed it. But our basic recipe can be altered as well. We can add ingredients. Now in our cake example, we'd be adding chocolate to make a marble cake, or we'd add orange to make an orange cake. We can add ingredients to concrete to create a very strong concrete. A concrete that's almost as strong as steel in compression. And it's not science fiction. It's not something we do on very small things in the laboratory. It's a piece of concrete research that has grown to full maturity and is being used by engineers and designers in the field. Now, this bridge here is an example of that. It's built in a super strong concrete. And when I saw this photograph of this bridge for the first time, I thought, huh? That's not possible. As a structural engineering student, I had my courses in steel design and concrete design, and I gained this sort of sense of sizes and shapes and dimensions. And this is pretty much out of the range of that. 
But now look with me at this photograph and think of how we started today by looking at the structures. Do you see the interaction between the structure and the river here? And do you see the very, very slender arch that's like two arms that branch out from both shores? And that made me realize that if we change our concrete recipe, our possibilities for design, for output, become so much larger. And I like to compare that to a painter. He has a box with five colors, black, white, red, yellow, and blue. And he's painting in these five colors. And suddenly he realizes he can mix these colors and create every shade possible. Another example of improving our concrete recipe is by adding materials that make working with the concrete easier. What you see in this photograph is how we fill little cubes of concrete. So we get our concrete from the producer. We make the big specimens with it, but we also fill these little cubes and we test them at different points in time to see how the concrete gains its strength. And one day we were going to test a different type of concrete, a slightly stronger one, something we hadn't used before. And I said, okay, I want to know a lot about the material. I want to have 102 of these cubes. And my colleagues in the lab said, oh yeah, well, as long as you do it, go ahead. And we got this new mixture, and it didn't have that many tools in there. So it was very, very stiff and very hard. So I needed both my hands to scoop up the concrete and fill the cubes. And that made me realize, well, for me, it's just two hours in the laboratory trying to push through, getting it done. But for people in the field, having these tools is very important. So far, we've talked about how we can add ingredients to our concrete. Next, we will look at how we can look at our basic ingredients. So for our cake example, that would be maybe replacing the milk by soy milk. And we will look at cement and the stones. Let's start with cement. Concrete, as we know it now, ranks very poor when it comes to sustainability. And one of the reasons is that manufacturing cement results in very large carbon dioxide emissions. It's responsible for about 5% of the world's carbon dioxide emissions, which makes it in that regard one of the most polluting industries. So manufacturers and researchers are starting to realize that if we want to keep concrete an attractive product, something needs to be changed. So manufacturers are trying to improve the way they create concrete. And some of the things they work towards is also sequestered cement, where you take the carbon dioxide output from one process, like a fossil fuel plant, and you capture it within the cement. Researchers are using more refined models to look at the precise role of the cement, see how much of it we exactly need and how much we can replace by other similar materials and still get the same performance criteria. And again, it comes down to improving our recipe. And then the stones. What's well, typically done, especially in con com countries like the Netherlands, with a lot of rivers, they take stones from riverbeds, put it in the concrete, and 50 to 100 years later, it all goes to waste. And if you keep scooping up your stones from your riverbed, at the end you're left with the mud, and it changes the flow characteristics of your river. So what companies are working towards as well is recycling the stones after a construction goes to waste. There's two things that are important to keep in mind here. We like the stones to be nice and rounded, because that's important for a good concrete. And we need a process that is cheap, because concrete is a cheap material. And to keep it attractive as it is, we like a cheap process to recycle the stones. So as of now, this is mostly used in foundations and roads. And so far, we've talked about our recipe for concrete. We've looked at how we can change it to get a stronger concrete, 
which gives us more possibilities for slender design. A more workable concrete, which makes for the people that work with the concrete it easier. And a greener concrete, giving a smaller impact of building with concrete on our environment. And same idea comes back in Peter Haas' Hades Disaster of Engineering, where we will see how changing a small detail in building with masonry makes the difference between a structure that collapses during an earthquake and causes a lot of casualties, or a structure that could actually provide safe shelter. Now the final question to answer today is, can we build beautiful structures in concrete? And can concrete be art? I have some examples for you. Now this here is a pavilion that is outside of the Architects Association School of Architecture in London. And very interesting to see here is that the concrete has three functions. It's not only the structure and the shell itself, but it adds the texture to it. And if you look on the inside, it's the furniture. The second example is this library of a college in Germany. And it's a pure gray concrete building. It's not painted on, it's just concrete. It's what we call photo concrete. So let's look into detail at one of these pictures. And you see here how we can create pictures on a concrete surface. What they do is that, because concrete is wet when you make it, they place a form liner against it and create a photograph. So what you can do is, if you have any photograph on your computer, you can send it to this sort of printer, make this elastic form liner, and then place it against wet concrete and get a picture. Another example is translucent concrete. Concrete that has light conductors woven into it. So you actually see the shadows through it. Now this photograph is from a wall at outside of a Hungarian museum. It's a Hungarian invention. It's also being used in companies. They like to have an eye-catching wall with their logo on it. Perfect material for it. Or for a lamp, there's a designer that got his idea of using this material to make a lamp. So he put the lamp in the middle and this translucent concrete around it. And the final example is an art object that you might know because it's on our university campus, on the Mekelweg. And it has no structural purpose at all. It's in concrete. And the only reason why it is, is just to be art. So I'd like to ask you, Next time, when you see a gray, sad, concrete building, which might be right when you step out of these doors, to realize that is just one way of building in concrete. But we have so many more possibilities for beautiful design. Thank you.